All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to teach you step by step how to solve these buffer calculation questions. All right, this makes up a core part of the asses and bases topic. This is a five marker. Sometimes will be six, normally five, six marks, but they are super good to learn just because it's easy marks, right? Once you understand it, you can literally replicate it every single time. The numbers themselves that they give you are really simple because it's, a, it's an actual practical, you know, people, real humans are making these um, by hand. So it, it's not complicated, really low value numbers. There's not any complicated maths involved. There's just a bit of theory that you need to understand and literally step by step how to solve these. So this is not unique to AQA. This applies to Edexcel, OCR, whatever example you're doing, okay? They all test on buffer calculations. The maths does not change, all right? So pause the video, attempt this question yourself, guys. It's really important that you practice. Focus on your mistakes. That is seriously how you improve in chemistry. Just focus, where the hell am I going wrong? Why am I going wrong? Why am I making these mistakes? Is there something I don't understand? And just learn from that and just, just roll with it. Just keep banging out practice question after practice question. I did a recent poll recently of what the worst A-level is, and by far it was chem. So people are obviously just hating their life with chem right now, but just keep practicing these questions, guys. And honestly, it will get better and better as you go. So let's read through this question together and see what's going on. We have a buffer solution, and this was formed by mixing 20 centimeters cubed of good old NaOH uh, of concentration 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed with 25 centimeters cubed of ethanoic acid, classic weak acid right here, and the conch is given right here. So I'm just gonna underline the variables that we're gonna be using in the question, and then we're given a cheeky equation right here. Really easy stuff. And they've asked us to calculate the pH of this buffer. All right, they've given us a good old Ka value as well for our weak ethanoic acid. All right, if, if you're struggling in life in chemistry and you just don't know what to do with these buffer questions, when in doubt, start with the moles. So I'm actually gonna write out steps for us. Start with moles. Okay, I've made a few videos on this in the past, but it's, it's always good to keep practicing. So this is just a different question. So step one, always start with the moles. What do I mean by this, start with the moles? I simply mean just take the variables given in the question and work out what the moles are. So how would you do that? You're gonna be using our fundamental mole calculation equations, right? So that is gonna be N equals something and N equals something, <laughs> okay? So what's this one gonna be? N equals M over MR. This is just one of the versions that we can use if it involves mass and molecular mass, right? And then the other one is N equals CV. So I advise all my students at the start when they're struggling with these math space questions, especially for like amount of substance and stuff like that, is just chuck these on the page. Literally just get in the exam. If you see a question that's calculation based that involves moles or something, step one, start with the moles, get these on the page, okay? If you're more advanced, you don't have to do that. But if you're just starting out, I, I heavily advise doing that, right? And then you just have to look at which one. Let's say we label this one and this is two. Think to yourself, which one can I use here? Do we have mass? Do we have molar mass? Do we have concentration? Do we have volume? Which one can we use? So in this instance, we're dealing with buffers, acids and bases, good old solutions. So we're going to often be given a concentration or a volume which we can use to calculate the moles. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to say step one is moles of what? What are we working out the moles of? We're gonna be working out the moles of the salt or the strong base. So this is our sodium hydroxide right here. And then we're gonna be working out the moles also of the, the acid to start with, okay? So this will be initial moles of the acid. I'll get into initial final moles and all that stuff at, towards the end. Um, but let's just start with working out the initial moles. So I'm gonna put sodium hydroxide here and then I'm gonna put HCl. Sorry, not HCl, where did come from? Ethanoic acid, CH3COOH. All right, cool. So this is gonna equal CV. So what is our concentration? Our concentration is 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed, and our volume is 20 centimeters cubed. Okay, now, can we just put 20 here? No, we can't. Hopefully you guys are aware that we need to convert the units into decimeters cubed because our concentration is in what unit? Moles per decimeters cubed. So when you do this equation to calculate the moles, if this portion, the volume portion, is not the same, you're gonna mess up, all right? You're gonna get the wrong answer. So we have to do that. How do we convert from centimeters cubed into decimeters cubed? We do divide by a thousand. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chuck my 20 here. You can either do just simply divide by a thousand in your calculator, or what I like to do is use the standard form version, but you honestly don't have to do that, times 10 to minus three. Exactly the same thing as divide by a thousand, right? 
So before I, I chuck this in my calculator, let's do the moles of ethanoic acid as well. So what's our concentration here? 0.15 multiplied by our volume. Again, this is centimeters cubed, so we have to convert it, but it's really easy. 25 times 10 to minus three. So I'm gonna get rid of these right here because we don't need them anymore. All good, we solved that. If you put these in your calculator, the strong base or the salt right here is gonna be 0.002 mole, okay? And then the weak acid is gonna be 0.00375 mole. All right, so that would be our first two marks right here, okay? If you, if you don't know what to do, just get these on the page. That is our first two marks out of five. So what do we do here? We simply have to work out the final moles, okay? So let's look at a typical equation if we if we draw this out. So step two here is gonna be final moles. Don't write this and this, don't write the steps out in your exam, okay? Just, just write the blue font, uh, the blue text, but for the sake of teaching you, this is step by step what to do. Right, so quickly, I'm gonna teach you about the dissociation of ethanoic acid or any weak acid that we're looking at. And this is essentially how buffers work in solution, right? So what you're gonna have is your, dis <laughs> what happened to the arrow? So you're gonna have your equilibrium arrows, right? For all weak acids, you're gonna have an equilibrium arrow, dynamic equilibrium arrow, signifying that the reaction is reversible. This is because weak acids only slightly dissociate, meaning they, they essentially stay together, right? They don't break up into their constituent ions. So what we're gonna have on the other side of the equation is our anion, and then we're gonna have our H plus, okay? Now what happens is when we add something to the, solu the initial solution, all right, so what we did here is we mixed sodium hydroxide with the ethanoic acid. So what we've essentially done is we've added sodium hydroxide to this equation, okay? Now, sodium hydroxide is gonna dissociate because it's a strong base into Na plus plus OH minus, okay? Now what's gonna happen here is that when we add this into the beaker, this OH minus is gonna react with this H plus, okay? To form good old H2O. Now, when this happens, right, this essentially is, when, when these form a bond, a covalent bond and form water, this is reducing the amount of moles within this equilibrium, okay? And if you've done KC revision, Le Chatelier principle, equilibrium and all that stuff, if you change a portion of a, a reaction, the equilibrium will shift to oppose that change, okay? So what's happened here is these have reacted and formed water. So therefore the moles, of the H plus ion has decreased, okay? It's decreased the moles of the H plus ion. So what we need to do is we need to shift the equilibrium to oppose that change. So if we look at this equation right here, what's gonna happen to the equilibrium? Which direction is it gonna shift? Is it gonna shift to the left back towards ethanoic acid, or in other words, these react together to form ethanoic acid? Or is it gonna shift towards the right-hand side where this dissociates and forms more of these products right here? it's gonna to go to the right-hand side because we've reduced the moles of the H plus, equilibrium shifts to oppose that change. We want more moles of this back to obtain equilibrium again. Kind of think of it like homeostasis, okay? So the equilibrium is gonna to shift to the right-hand side. What does that mean? It means that whatever moles of OH minus we added into the buffer, we have to minus from the weak acid, okay? So for example, if the equilibrium shifts to the right, you minus it. If the equilibrium shifts to the left, you plus it, okay? So just remember, if we're minusing something from this side within equilibrium, you think of your ice tables. Hopefully you guys have done ice tables, right? You're gonna add it onto the right-hand side. So that's exactly what we're gonna do here. We're gonna look at the moles of the ethanoic acid, final, essentially after these have reacted and, and the buffer has taken place. It's gonna be our initial moles of ethanoic acid, which is 0 0.00375, minus the moles of the, the sodium hydroxide that we added, or simply just, you can think of it just as the hydroxide, right? So it's gonna be minus 0 0.002, and we're gonna put that in our calculator, okay? You can do it in your head, but I'm gonna do it in the calculator just to be safe, 0 0.0175. Okay, and that would be the moles of the ethanoic acid once this has reacted with the sodium hydroxide. Okay, so just try and wrap your head around this and you should be all good to go. Right, so where do we go from here? We've worked out the moles starting. We've worked out the moles of weak acid once they've reacted in our solution, right, in our beaker. 
What we have to do next is we have to find out the concentration of H plus. Okay. The reason that we want to find the concentration of H plus is so that we can feed it into our pH expression, pH equals minus log H plus concentration. And that's because that's just what we want to do. We want to find the pH, right? That's what they've asked us to do in the question. So how do we do this? How are we going to work out what our H plus is? A little tip here, guys, they have given us the Ka. If you're reading through a question and, and you get to this, right? So this will be three marks so far. Okay, you're, you're here, you've made three marks. There's two marks left up for grabs. And you're like, dude, I'm so lost. I'm stressing out. I don't know what to do. Just read through the questions quickly again, okay? Have I used these variables? I've, okay, I've used this, I've used this, I've used this, I've used this. Have I used this? No, I haven't used this. Why have they given it to me? Why have they given me the Ka? Because they want me to use it, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our Ka expression rearranged to find this, okay? So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Do you remember what the Ka expression looks like? So it's gonna be Ka equals, normally it's just gonna be H plus A minus over HA, right? So that is our salt. We know what that is, that's our OH minus. This right here is our weak acid. I'm just gonna call that WA. We know what our Ka is, given this in the question. So what we want to do here is just rearrange it to find the H plus concentration. Okay, now there's something really important to keep in mind here is that we have worked out the moles. Okay, we've worked out the moles so far. So if I put mole here, actually, I forgot to put that. You don't need to put your units in, but I'm just doing it for you guys. This is not moles. This is concentration. So what we want to do is we want to use our initial uh, N equals CV rearrange that to make concentration the subject. So it's going to be moles over volume. Okay. So if you're not too sure, let me quickly calculate for you right now. So mole, uh, concentration of salt, sorry, is going to equal our moles divided by volume. So our moles we've already calculated to be 0 0.002 divided by a volume, right? So our volume of salt right here says that it's 20 centimeters cubed. This is the initial volume, but in the beaker, we have the entire volume. So it's going to be 20 plus 25, which is going to give us 45. Again, you have to convert it into decimeters cubed. Okay, so I'm just going to do my classic times 10 to the minus 3. But again, you can use divide by 1,000. That's completely fine. So that's our salt concentration done. I'm just going to quickly draw out our concentration of weak acid, okay, before we actually plug this into our calculator. So again, it's going to be our moles, which we worked out to be 0 0.00175. That's the final moles right here. You don't want to use the initial moles. Divided by our total volume, again, it's 45 times 10 to the minus 3. Exactly the same volume here because they're in the same beaker. So if you put that in your calculator, you're going to get the concentration of the salt to be 0.044 recurring. Okay, I'm just going to put that down to three sig figs here. So 0.0444. And again, that's moles per decimeter cubed, but I'm going to leave off the units for now. And then if you did that for the weak acid, you're going to get 0 0.03889. Okay, two three sig figs like that. Okay, cool. So what we want to do now is we want to plug these values that we just calculated into the rearranged version of this. So essentially, you want to make H plus the subject, take these guys to the other side of the equal sign, and you'll be all good to go. So hopefully you guys know how to rearrange equations. So I'm not going to go over it in this video, but make sure you practice it because it comes up so much in chemistry. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to have H plus as the subject equals what we're going to do is multiply both sides by HA because we, it's divided on this side. So if it goes across the equals, we want to multiply it. So it's going to be Ka multiplied by HA concentration. And then because this is multiplied on this side, we want to divide it on this side. Okay. So all you, it's really simple. All you have to do is just put in our values. So our Ka is 1.74 times 10 to the minus five moles per decimeter cubed multiplied by our HA concentration, which, which we just calculated to be 0 0.00389 divided by our salt concentration, which is 0 0.0444. So if we do that, I'm gonna do it down here just because we're running out of space. So if you put that in your calculator in standard form, it should give you the answer of 1.52446 times 10 to the minus five, okay? And that is concentration, so that's gonna be moles per decimeter cubed, but we don't really care about our units right here. So this is H plus concentration, 
like I said previously in the video, we're going to plug that into our pH expression to find our pH, and that is going to be our fifth and final mark. So let's do that down here. pH equals minus log this value here, 1.52446 times 10 to minus 5 equals 4.81688. So that's our pH, is their answer correct? No, it's not, okay? So you have to keep in mind, depending on your exam board, they're gonna ask you to show the pH normally to a, a certain number of significant figures. So for example, for AQA, I know for a fact that they always wanna see the pH to two decimal places, all right? But for other examples, you just wanna think to yourself, what is the lowest number of significant figures given to me in the question? So here is two. So I would put an answer of 4.8 as my final answer. But for the sake of AQA, I'm gonna round this to two decimal places. And that is our final answer and our fifth and final mark. There would have been a mark for H plus concentration as well. So that's five juicy marks right here. And this is essentially the step-by-step -step method that you wanna follow. There are ones where you'll add a solid and it's a slightly different methodology, but for the most part, you're gonna be following this process. Step one, start with the moles. The, when I say start with the moles, I mean initial moles, so whatever variables you're given in the question. And then we're gonna get some sort of reaction going on, right? Like this with the equilibrium. And this right here, the, I, I sort of brushed over this, but the initial moles of the sodium hydroxide or the salt is gonna be exactly the same as the final moles of the salt because it is a strong base, it's gonna fully dissociate. Okay, so just keep that in mind. You're not gonna get a second thing here where you have to take it away or plus it, depending on what is being added and what is being taken away, okay? So then step two is final moles, which is after everything's reacted, like I just said, you're gonna be given the final moles and then from there, you're gonna plug it into our K Ka expression and rearrange it to find H plus, which you just feed into your pH expression right here. A lot of students struggle with buffer calculations, guys, but it's honestly not hard. Just practice every question you can, and after a while, it just becomes second nature. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, like the video, send it to any of your mates that are doing chemistry that might find it helpful. Subscribe for future science and maths videos. All the best with your revision and upcoming exams, guys. Until next time. Peace.